Oh my god, guys! Falcon and the Winter Soldier is over! <laughs> it is bittersweet because it was such a good show. So fucking needed. Like, especially in this day and age. And I just... And by the way, though, I needed my wine for this one. I want to talk about how, holy shit, black creators have been going through it because of this fucking show. I think one of the most important things we've learned about this show is about just willful ignorance. How far people will go to be willfully ignorant just about what's right in front of their face, even in fiction. And to me, this is a lesson that certain people out there are literally not worth debating with because by being so willfully ignorant, they have, to me, reduced their intelligence down to that of a squirrel. I wouldn't argue with a fucking squirrel and then get upset because it's a fucking squirrel. That's how I see people like that, honestly, especially after this. Let me tell you, in case you guys didn't know, but black creators talking about this, talking about the racial themes, the clear racial themes in this show, which by the way, isn't completely fiction because things that happened to Isaiah definitely fucking happened to us back in those days, World War II, Korea, Vietnam, like that time period. What happened to Isaiah in this fictional story is completely based on completely real fucking things that have happened in American history, okay? So we'll knock that one out the fucking window. But so many of us have been bullied, harassed, gaslit. Now, I am not here to make you feel sorry for myself, to sorry for me. This is just information because I want you guys to know what the fuck we go through just to talk about race, just to talk about our own personal experiences, just to talk about what the fucking show is actually fucking talking about. It was talking about, it, 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 like, from the fucking second episode, it became, it was, like, verbalized. It was literally verbalized. Like, it was barely even, like, insinuated, because it definitely wasn't the first episode. But it, over and over, creators like myself, Straw Hat Goofy on TikTok... As I understand it, I believe we're kind of in the top of Marvel creators right now, especially during during the show. And people have been gaslighting us so bad, you know, trying to be like, no, this show isn't about race. It might be a small theme, but that's not all it's fucking about. Someone shut the goddamn alarm off. That's not what it's all the fuck about. But it's like, motherfucker, like, it's... Like, how can you be that fucking dense and on purpose? How? And in Straw Hat Goofy's case, they, there's been people straight up in his DMs calling him a nigger. Are you hard R? Are you fucking kidding me? I probably didn't get it because some people don't know that I'm black. <laughs> But that is awful. That is the kind of shit we have to go through. I've gotten other messages, though. I've gotten other messages like, oh, you blue-haired, lip-tarred, this, this, and that. You know, like, oh, you people always want to make everything about race. Oh, you stupid bitch. Like, all of this stuff. Like, it has been, it's been hell, honestly. Um, From the comment sections to the DMs, it has been hard because the harassment just went all the way up just just for us talking about the themes that were obviously in the fucking show and that shows honestly just how fragile if you want to have a good idea of how fragile racist white america is or willfully ignorant white america is that is how bad it is that's how bad it is that because and and, and isn't it funny because it's like i didn't make the fucking show you know, I'm just commentating on it and the actual, like, obvious themes there. But because of their anger at this show, exposing things about white privilege, exposing things about, 
you know, the history of this country, people decided to take it out on us. People decided to take it out on us, all that rage, and just post some heinous comments, send us some heinous DMs. And that is the price that we pay for literally just speaking up. And I, I need you guys to see that. I need you guys to understand like that is the price that we pay merely for speaking up about our own experiences, which is why so many of us grew up not doing it. It's why some, so many of us are just starting to now because this is what we've feared all of our lives. This is what we feared all of our lives, being bullied, being called nigger, being called a jigaboo, being called whatever. We have tiptoed around white folks for so long. And because this is the price to pay just for saying the mildest shit. Just for saying the mildest shit. Oh, I think I got one. What was one that said to me? I was talking about the mental health aspect with John Walker or whatever. And somebody, people were like making fun of my PTSD. Um, people were making fun of my PTSD when I told them that the, I posted a video saying that the show was bringing back some really painful memories of the Air Force and that I was, I was triggered and very surprised that I was triggered. And people were making fun of my fucking PTSD then they're like, well, you, if you're triggered by that, then you obviously have never gone through anything hard in your life and all this and this and that. And what was I saying? The other one was, um, they're like, oh, you, you cry wolf, bitch. I bet that you're one of those people that go to equal opportunity every time you get your feelings hurt, which is like crazy because in my case, when I was being sexually harassed and stalked by my fucking boss in the military, I was so afraid to go to equal opportunity. I was so afraid to go to equal opportunity because I was afraid of being ostracized and I was afraid of being bullied and because equal opportunity was ne right next door to my fucking office, I was afraid that she would see me go because she always had people following me on base. And so I was terrified to go and seek help at all because she had somebody following me. And so that brought back some even more terrible memories and it's ironic because it's like I didn't go to EO. I didn't go to Equal Opportunity the first time, motherfucker, because my ass had been brainwashed to protect white people first before my own. And so I held off for a very long time before telling anyone what she was doing to me. Um, so that's very ironic um, to get multiple messages, multiple things like that. And... Um, and like that straw hat goofy as another one that I know that um, uh, at least what he is showed us on his TikTok even worse. And I can imagine so because he is a visibly, very visibly dark skinned black man. And that um, <laughs> I, I carry a level of light skin privilege that um, that kind of shields me sometimes a little bit from things like that. And so, and I, I came like I he, I came across a, a TikTok where he was he was crying about it, and um, guys, this is what we go through. This is the cost. This is the cost for speaking up, for voicing our opinions or in, on anything, for being a Marvel fan and being a person of color, or being a Marvel fan and being a woman, a woman of color. This is what we go through, um, and I know we're not the only ones to have gone through it, but that is what it has been and it's absolutely crazy um fuck um i know jace i i know straw hat even like he, like he had to, he had to post a video basically of kevin feige literally saying like yeah this is definitely the fuck about race and i don't know how people are reacting to that but i remember straw hat goofy's video that ended but like oh but it sounds better coming from feige than it does from me huh and the unfortunate fucking, and this is another lesson that this, that the experience of the show has taught us or should have taught us is that unfortunately, 
uh, people will only digest hard information sometimes when it is coming from a figure of authority, AKA a white man, because we are never seen as figures of authority um, ever. We are, we are, we are, people still subconsciously see us as inferior. And so, yeah, of course, Kevin Feige has to come out and say something or some or they have to hear Kevin Feige say, yes, this show is about fucking race. But you know what? There are still people out there that will still be saying the same shit. That's not what it's about. That's not what it's about. Like I said, guys, to me, those people, if you are going to be that willfully ignorant about fiction, first of all, much less what is going on in real life to your fellow man. Those people are at such a lower intellectual caliber than I and some of you out there, and they are not worth engaging. You can't change somebody that doesn't want to be changed. You can't change somebody that would go to that fucking length to literally within an inch of gouging their eyes out and busting their own eardrums so they cannot see or hear what they don't want to see or hear or process or deal with. Never mind that it's something that we have to deal with internally because we can't choose how we're born and what we look like. Those people ain't worth it. And I will say, like Falcon and the Winter Soldier, it definitely brought out a very ugly side of the Marvel fandom. I'm very disappointed. Um, it really, really brought out a very toxic, um, a very toxic uh, group from the Marvel fandom. But you know what? Um, I... This show is needed because for all of the fucking hate and the anti-Sam Wilsons that have been out there, you fuckboy fanboy racists, uh, ever since he got the shield in Endgame, um, I feel like this was a kind of a perverted love, love letter to you motherfuckers. Um, especially at the end when the title changed to Captain America and the Winter Soldier. Um, this is Marvel saying... This is our dude. This is Captain America. Deal with it. Suck my balls. Of course, I don't speak for Marvel Studios, but that's what it registers to me in my head. I'm telling you to suck my balls. I'll, I'll tell you. This is our Captain America. Suck my balls. Kiss my ass. Deal with it. And I'm so glad that Marvel, with the, the platform and the resources and just the sheer power over media that they have, told this story because it's not just fictional. It is so fucking real to American history. Um, Isaiah Bradley is real. You can replace his name with many others. Trust me. Or Google it. Honestly, fucking Google it. So yeah, that's what it's been like for us guys. Um, just to give you some insight into what it's like, especially in fandoms like this. To every, to those motherfuckers that called Goofy a nigger with a hard R, I swear to fucking God, I hope that you know that you are the fucking scum of the earth. All y'all, honestly, all y'all that are out here gaslighting, gaslighting, bullying us, you know, it, go fuck yourself, really. Like, you're scum. It's come to me, and I'm never going to engage you, honestly. Like, if you're ever looking for me to actually respond to your stupidity in a full fashion, I, I don't think I will. At least the plan is that I don't, because you are so below me. You are so below so many of us out here that you are lower than the gum stuck to the bottom of my shoe. I mean that with all of my fucking heart. All my fucking heart. But I'm glad we had this show because it showed a lot of true colors. It, um, it was the uplifting black story that I needed, that a lot of us needed. And um, yeah, but like I said, when it comes to things like this, black creators, unfortunately, we will always have a target on our back and we will have to take a lot of arrows and bullets just to speak our mind. And that's why speaking our mind 
is terrifying and dangerous to so many of us. Think on that.